It's only been a couple of weeks since the launch of the Nintendo Switch Lite and already companies in China are jumping on the bandwagon with the shape, the design and the colors. And they are trying to catch the attention of people exactly like me who are idiots. So <laughs> today I have bought the Family Pocket Digital Pad Slim Station GP40. Now this thing has obviously been made to look like the Nintendo Switch Lite. Whether or not it's gonna be anything like that, I don't know. I paid under 20 pounds for this thing. I believe it was just over 18 pounds. And as you can see, without me even having to get out of the box, they've clearly tried to design it looking like the Switch Lite. So here is the device itself. The box is very, very reminiscent of things that we've seen in the past. It's just sort of the average generic stuff. Inside we have this manual, which on the back is in English. Um, thanks, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. That's not something that you see from Nintendo. Thanks for purchasing our Family Pocket Gamer Player. This product is small and Family Pocket portable. Please read the following contents prior to connecting and playing to ensure proper use and care. Yeah, we're not gonna be doing that. Also in the box is a little smiley face, which is always very nice. And if we take that out, we have a lanyard, which is going straight in the bin. We have a micro USB cable, which is five years old. And we have a AV cable to um, your regular AV out. Brilliant. Although I do remember seeing that this thing is HDMI capable. HD TV out. So it should have a HDMI cable functionality. We'll have to test that a little bit later. Up in the corner where it says TV output notes, it doesn't have anything about HDMI. I was hoping that was gonna be the one point, at least, that this thing has over the Switch Lite, and that is that it can be played on the TV. So here we go. Lovely, look at that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's absolutely the same color. It's, it's pretty much identical. We've got a D-pad, which is what the Switch Lite has. We've got a joystick, which is what the Switch Lite has. Again, another joystick on this side, the directional pad. We've got a plus and a minus. On the top, we don't have shoulder buttons, which the Switch Lite clearly has. Um, on the bottom, we've got some additional buttons. We've got a circle and a triangle and an M button. We've got our lanyard holder, which as we know, we won't be using straight in the bin. And if we pop off the back, which looks like it can be done, let's see. Is that where we'll find our HDMI cable? No, that's where we're gonna find a Nokia clone battery, which actually says on it, batteries for walkie talkies. Although one cool thing that I really do like about this design is it's got a slot for three AAA. So if you run out of battery and you really wanna play this thing, you can pick up some AAAs. Although I can't imagine many people are gonna wanna play this thing. We've got HD TV, which is literally a mini HDMI slot and it comes with a rubber cover. So we're definitely gonna check that out. We've got our USB in, we've got TV out, we've got on and off, we've got headphones and a little finger there pointing to open the device. We've also got a screen protector, let's rip that off. Lovely, the screen is already scratched. That's what I like to see. So I found a game that we may be familiar with and that is Mario 3, which is obviously going to be Super Mario Bros 3, which is a Famicom slash NES classic. We'll hit the, uh, the play button here and that will start it. Yeah, the colors are very, very nice on this screen. I mean, it does look gorgeous. The blacks are actually really good as well, which is Quite surprising, if I'm honest. For 20 pounds, by the way, you have to remember this is 20 pounds. That is less than a Joy-Con. It's obviously a very good price, but is it gonna be worth it? Is it gonna be able to do anything? This screen is like 16 by nine. It's not four by three, which immediately means that the games are not going to be accurate um, to the original. So let's go in and play a little game of Super Mario. Ooh. That's not slower than I remember it. <laughs> My God, that is, yeah, that is far, far slower than I remember it. Um, so much so that I think this is actually gonna be unplayable. The screen tear on this thing is pretty unreal, to be honest with you. Oh dear. So this joystick up here is pretty much for turbo buttons, uh, which is, I guess, pretty useful for some games and stuff. Oh no, it's not actually. No, this joystick up here is mapped exactly 
to these buttons here. So when you move it to the side, to the, to the right, it's the same as this right button. When it's down, exactly the same. So it's just been, you can actually play it like this, which may actually be com more comfortable for some people. Um, I've never played Super Mario with uh, two joysticks, but it does actually feel pretty good, to be honest with you. Uh, which means you won't be able to run and jump together because you can't obviously hold down two directions on the joystick. But yeah, I mean, it's pretty playable. It's very, very slow. It does, it does obviously need to be said that it is far slower than what you'd be wanting to play this at. But it is very playable. It's loading everything in quite slow as well. It's not just like the speed of it. It seems to be more uh, the actual processing power of it. And the screen does have a few sort of graphical glitches uh, with, you know, with things loading in and out. But for £20, so far, it's very comfortable. The screen is very nice to look at. It's got brilliant viewing angles. Honestly, you can see this thing at pretty much every angle possible, which is pretty nice, to be honest with you. And it is quite functional. Let's check out another game that we might be familiar with. Apparently, it has 208 games in one. Now... One of my arguments for these things to, su to suggest why they are actually worthwhile buying is for 20 quid, having 208 games classics in a really nice comfortable form factor is actually quite a nice thing. You'll be surprised. You'll be looking through all the different games and going through 208 games realistically is going to take you some time. It's the perfect little travel handheld and obviously costs a tenth of the price of the actual Switch. Yes, it's not going to give you as much fun, but it might give you a good pastime. A little bit of the good old Tetris. You don't have to pay stupid Switch online prices to play this one. Ahem, <clears throat> Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, this is really good, actually. This is uh, very, very functional. Um, everything is responsive. There isn't any music. I think that might be because I selected to not have any music. But yeah, I mean, I'm always surprised with these things, to be honest with you. Tetris isn't exactly a game that you need to be playing at the perfect speed. So for this sort of puzzle game, speed and especially screen tear is not going to be something to, you know, take into consideration at all. You can just enjoy the game for what it is. Going home is quite simple. You're just pressing this little button here. M, I guess that's maybe for menu or something. Um, we've also got Golden Axe on here, which is a fantastic game. So let's give that a little play. And Double Dragon 3. So we've definitely got some goodies on here. Oh yeah, I'm loving this. Some of these games as well are quite expensive to actually play on the original hardware. Plus, it's not a very um, an easy it's not a very easy setup to play Famicom games. You know, you have to make sure you've got a CRT. Um, in some cases, you might need to have different sort of power converters. So this is a pretty convenient way to play all of the different popular games um, for the price of just one. Unfortunately, some of the games are in what looks to be Japanese. Sometimes you have a selection of English and Japanese on these things. You don't have that on this. So any sort of story uh, style game isn't obviously gonna work. That being said, there aren't many RPGs that are gonna be played on the Famicom. Another thing to mention as well is there is definitely not any sort of save function on this. Um, most games on the NES don't have save functions anyway. It's quite clearly a ripoff of the Switch Lite. Is it as good? Definitely not. Is it good? Definitely. £20. Can't really complain. I hope you guys have all enjoyed this video. If you want to pick one of these up, I'll leave it in the description below. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I will catch you in the next video. Peace. So just very quickly then, for people who are interested, here is my HDMI monitor that I use for my camera. And on the end is a mini HDMI. Let's just go ahead and chuck it in here and see what happens. Maybe we can try and press some buttons. Nope, that's not gonna work. Uh, maybe if we turn it off and then on again. Nope, that is not gonna work. Hmm. I wonder if this thing actually has any HDMI functionality at all. Realistically, there's only one way to find out. Let's open this thing up. It's quite nice to know as well that the color of the plastic is actually the color of the switch, it, which means that you know it's not gonna scratch or something and then leave some white marks on it underneath. I always prefer plastic to be uh, obviously the actual color as opposed to being painted. So we shall remove the battery. 
There's a bunch of screws around the outside. Let's go ahead and undo all of those. And here we go. Let's lift this off. Boom. What can we see in here? Wow, okay. The pins coming out of the HDMI um, actual connector aren't even soldered to the motherboard. So yeah, this definitely does not have any sort of video out function. There's also a blank um, space here for a chip and a bunch of resistors and surface mount components that are not present, which leads me to believe that this thing definitely, definitely does not have any sort of HDMI function. Also, here are the joysticks. Will they drift? That is the big question. Find out in next episode. I'm joking. Goodbye.